Welcome to Legendary Motivation Channel. Join us as we listen to some of Neville Goddard's radio talk in 1950s, which were never recorded or released on the internet before, until now. Today lecture is by a firm, The Reality of Our Own Greatness. Sit back and enjoy the masterpiece work of One of At Your Command, Part 2, Neville Goddard. You are told, He who lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives to all liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask, not doubting, for he who doubts is as a wave of the sea that is tossed and battered by the wind. And let not such a one think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. You can see why this statement is made. For only upon the rock of faith can anything be established. If you haven't the consciousness of the thing, you have not the cause or foundation upon which thing is erected. A proof of this established consciousness is given you in the words, thank you, Father. When you come into the joy of thanksgiving so that you actually feel grateful for having received that which is not yet apparent to the senses, you have definitely become one in consciousness with the thing for which you gave thanks. God, your awareness is not mocked. You are ever receiving that which you are aware of being and no man gives thanks for something which he has not received. Thank you, Father, is not. As it is used by many today, a sort of magical formula, you need never utter aloud the words, thank you, Father. In applying this principle, as you rise in consciousness to the point where you are really grateful and happy for having received the thing desired, you automatically rejoice and give thanks inwardly. You have already accepted the gift which was but a desire before you rose in consciousness. And your faith is now the substance that shall clothe your desire. This rising in consciousness is the spiritual marriage, where two shall agree upon being one, and their likeness or image is established on earth. For whatsoever ye ask in my name, the same give I unto you. Whatsoever is quite a large measure. It is the unconditional. It does not state if society deems it right or wrong that you should ask it. It rests with you. Do you really want it? Do you desire it? That is all that is necessary. Life will give it to you as you ask in his name. His name is not a name that you pronounce with the lips. You can ask forever in the name of God or Jehovah Christ Jesus, and you will ask in vain. Names means nature. So when you ask in the nature of a thing, results ever. To ask in the name is to rise in consciousness and become one in nature with the thing desired, rise in consciousness to the nature of the thing, and you will become that thing in expression. Therefore, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall receive them. Praying, as we have shown you before, is recognition. The injunction to believe that ye receive is first person, present tense. This means that you must be in the nature of the things asked for before you can receive them. To get into the nature easily, General amnesty is necessary. We are told, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which, which is in heaven, may forgive you. But if ye forgive not, neither will your Father forgive you. This may seem to be some personal God who is pleased or displeased with your actions, but this is not the case. Consciousness being God. If you hold in consciousness anything against man, you are binding the condition in your world. But to release man from all condemnation is to free yourself so that you may rise to any level necessary. There is therefore no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Therefore, a very good practice before you enter into your meditation is first to free every man in the world from blame. For all is never violated, and you can rest confidently in the knowledge that every man's conception of himself is going to be his reward. So you do not have to bother yourself about seeing whether or not man gets what you consider he should get. For life makes no mistakes and always gives man that which man first gives himself. This brings us to that much abused statement of the Bible on tithing. Teachers of all kinds have enslaved man with this affair of tithing, for not themselves understanding the nature of tithing and being themselves fearful of black. They have led their followers to believe that a tenth part of their income should be given to the Lord, meaning as they make very clear that when one gives a tenth part of his income to their particular organization, 
he is giving his tenth part to the Lord or his tithing. But remember, I am the Lord. Your awareness of being is the God that you give to and you ever give in this manner. Therefore, when you claim yourself to be anything, you have given that claim or quality to God. And your awareness of being, which is no respecter of persons, will return to you pressed down, shaken together, and running over with that quality or attribute which you claim for yourself. Awareness of being is nothing that you could ever name. To claim God to be rich, to be great, to be loved, to be all wise, is to define that which cannot be defined. For God is nothing that could ever be named, nothing is necessary. And you do tie with God. But from now on, give to the only God and see to it that you give him the quality that you desire as man to express by claiming yourself to be the great, the wealthy, the loving, the all-wise. Do not speculate as to how you shall express these qualities or claims, for life has a way that you, as man, know not of. Its ways are past finding out. But I assure you, the day you claim these qualities to the point of conviction, your claims will be honored. There's nothing covered that shall not be uncovered. That which is spoken in secret shall be proclaimed from the housetops. That is, your secret convictions of yourself, these are secret claims that no man knows of, when really believed, will be shouted from the housetops in your world. Or your convictions of yourself are the words of the God within you, which words are spirit and cannot return unto you void but must accomplish where unto they are sent. You are at this moment calling out of the infinite that which you are now conscious of being. And not one word or conviction will fail to find you. I am the vine and ye are the branches. Consciousness is the vine. And those qualities which you are now conscious of being are as in branches that you feed and keep alive. Just as a branch has no life except it be rooted in the vine. So likewise, things have no life, except you be conscious of them. Just as the branch withers and dies, if the sap of the vine ceases to flow towards it. So do things in your world pass away, if you take your attention from them? Because your attention is, is the sap of life, that keeps alive and sustains the things of your world. To dissolve a problem that now seems so real to you, all that you do is remove your attention from it. In spite of its seeming reality, turn from it in consciousness. Become indifferent and begin to feel yourself to be that which would be the solution of the problem. For instance, if you were imprisoned, no man would have to tell you that you should desire freedom. Freedom, or rather the desire of freedom, would be automatic. So why look behind the four walls of your prison bar? Take your attention from being imprisoned and begin to feel yourself to be feed it to the point where it is natural. The very second you do so, those prison bars will dissolve. Apply this same principle to any problem. I have seen people who were in debt up to their ears apply this principle, and in the twinkling of an eye depths that were mountainous were removed. I have seen those whom doctors had given up as incurable take their attention away from their problem of disease and begin to feel themselves to be well in spite of the evidence of their sense to the contrary. In no time at all, this so-called incurable disease vanished and left no scar. Your answer to, whom do you say that I am? The slaver determines your expression. As long as you are conscious of being imprisoned or diseased or poor, so long will you continue to outpicture or express their conditions. When man realizes that he is now that which he is seeking and begins to claim that he is, he will have the proof of his cue. This cue is given you in words, whom seek you? And they answered, Jesus, and the voice said, I am he. And Jesus here means salvation or a savior. You are seeking to be salvaged from that which is not your problem. I am is he that will save you. If you are hungry, your savior is food. If you are poor, your savior is riches. If you are imprisoned, your savior is freedom. If you are diseased, it will not be a man called Jesus who will save you, but health will become your savior. Therefore claim I am he, in other words, Claim yourself to be thing desired. Claim it in consciousness, not in words. And consciousness will reward you with your claim. You are told you shall find me when you feel after me. Well, feel after that quality in consciousness until you feel yourself to be it. When you lose yourself in the feeling of being it, 
the quality will embody itself in your world. You are healed from your problem when you touch the solution of it. Who has touched me? For I perceive that you is gone out of me. Yes, the day you touch this being within you. Feeling yourself to be cured, ill. Virtues will come out of your very self and solidify themselves in your world as healings. It is said, you believe in God. Believe also in me, for I am he. Have the faith of God. He made himself one with God and found it not robbery to do the works of God. Go you and do likewise. Yes, begin to believe your awareness, your consciousness of being to be God. Blame for yourself all the attributes that you have ever to for or given an external God. And you will begin to express these claims. For I am not a God afar off. I am nearer than your hands and feet, nearer than your very breathing. I am your awareness of being. I am that in which all that I shall ever be aware of being shall begin and end. For before the world was, I am. And when the world shall cease to be, I am. Before Abraham was, this is, him is your awareness. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. The Lord, being your consciousness, except that which you seek is first established in your consciousness. You will labor in vain to find it. All things must begin and end in consciousness. So blessed indeed is the man that trusteth in himself. For man's faith in God will ever be measured by his confidence in himself. You believe in a God, believe also in me. Put not your trust in men, for men but reflect the being that you are. And can only bring to you, or do unto you, that which you have first done unto yourself. No man taketh away my life, I lay it down myself. I have the power to lay it down, and the power to take it up again. No matter what happens to man in this world, it is never an accident. It occurs under the guidance of an exact and changeless law. No man manifesting comes unto me except the Father within me draw him, and I and my Father every one. Believe this truth, and you will be free. Man has always blamed others for that which he is and will continue to do so until he find himself as cause of all. I am comes not to destroy, but to fulfill. I am the awareness within you destroys nothing but ever fill for the molds or conception one has of oneself. It is impossible for the poor man to find wealth in this world no matter how he is surrounded with it until he first claims himself to be wealthy. For signs follow, they do not proceed. To constantly kick and complain against the limitations of poverty while remaining poor in consciousness is to play the fool's game. Changes cannot take place from that level of consciousness for life in constantly outpicturing all levels. Follow the example of the prodigal son. Realize that you yourself brought about this condition of waste and lack and make the decision within yourself to rise to a higher level where the fatted calf, the ring and the robe await your claim. There was no condemnation of the prodigal when he had the courage to claim this inheritance as his own. Others will condemn us only as long as we continue in that for which we condemn ourselves. So, happy is the man that condemneth himself, not in that which he alloweth. For to life nothing is condemned. All is expressed. Life does not care whether you call yourself rich or poor, strong or weak. It will eternally reward you with that which you claim is true of yourself. The measurements of right and wrong belong to man alone. In the life, there is nothing right or wrong. As Paul stated in Hirtus to the Romans, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean. To him it is unclean. Stop asking yourself whether you are worthy or unworthy to receive that which you desire. You as man did not create the desire. Your desires are ever fashioned within you because of what you now claim yourself. When a man is hungry, without thinking, he automatically desires food. When imprisoned, he automatically desires freedom and so forth. Your desires contain within themselves the plan of self-expression. So leave all judgments out of the picture and rise in consciousness to the level of your desire and make yourself one with it by claiming it to be so now. Thy grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect. Have faith in this unseen claim 
until the conviction is born within you that it is so. Your confidence in this claim will pay great rewards. Just a little while and the, the thing desired will come. But without faith, it is impossible to realize anything. Through faith, the worlds were framed because faith is the substance of the thing hoped for, the evidence of the thing not yet seen. Don't be anxious or concerned as they will follow just as surely as they follow as night. Look upon your desires, all of them as the spoken words of God and every word or desire a promise. The reason most of us fail to realize our desires is because we are constantly conditioning them. Do not condition your desires. Just accept it as it comes to you. Give thanks for it to the point that you are grateful for having already received it. Then go about your way in peace. Such acceptance of your desire is like dropping seed, fertile seed, into prepared soil. But when you can drop the thing desired in consciousness, confident that it shall appear, you have done all that expected to but to be worried or concerned about the how of your desire, maturing is to hold these fertile seeds on a mental grass, and therefore never to have dropped them in the soil of confidence. The reason men condition their desires is because they constantly judge after the appearance of being and see the things as real, forgetting that the only reality is the consciousness back of them. To see things as real is to deny that all things are possible to God. The man who is imprisoned and sees his four walls as real is automatically denying the urge or promise of God within him of freedom. A question often asked when this statement is made is, if one's desire is a gift of God, how can you say that I, one desires to kill a man that such a desire is good? And therefore God sent. In answer to this, let me say that no man desires to kill another. What he does desire is to be freed from such a one, but because he does not believe that the desire to be free from such a one contains within itself the powers of freedom. He conditions that desire and sees the only way to express such freedom is to destroy the man, forgetting that the life wrapped within the desire has ways that he as man knows not of. Its ways are past finding out. Thus, man distorts the gifts of God through his lack of faith. Problems are the mountains, spoken of that, can be removed if one has but the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. Men approach their problem as did the old lady, who, on attending service and hearing the priest say, if you had but the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you would say, unto yonder mountain be thou removed. And it shall be removed, and nothing is impossible to you. That night, as she said her prayers, she quoted this part of the scriptures and retired to bed in what she thought was faith. On arising in the morning, she rushed to the window and exclaims, I knew the old mountain would still be, for this is how man approaches his problem. He knows that they are still going to confront him. And because life is no respecter of persons and destroys nothing, it continues to keep alive that which he is conscious of being. Things will disappear only as man changes in consciousness. Deny that if you will, it still remains a fact that consciousness is the only reality in things, but mirror that which you are in consciousness. So the heavenly state you are seeking will be found only in consciousness. For the kingdom of heaven is within you. As the will of heaven is ever done on earth, you are today living in the heaven that you have established within you. For here on this very earth, your heaven reveals itself. The kingdom of heaven really is at hand. Now is the accepted time. So create a new heaven, enter into a new state of consciousness, and a new earth. Will the former things shall pass away. They shall not be remembered, not come into mind anymore. For behold, I, consciousness, come quickly, and my reward is with me. I am nameless, but will take upon myself every name, nature, that you call me. Remember it as you yourself, that I speak of as I me. So every conception, that you have of yourself, that is every deep conviction you have of yourself, is that which you shall appear as being, for I am not fooled. Now let me instruct you in the art of fishing. It is recorded that the disciples fished all night, 
and caught nothing. Then Jesus came upon the scene and told them to cast their nets in once more into the same waters that only a moment before were barren. And this time their nets were bursting with the catch. This story is taking place in the world today right within you, the reader. For you have within you all the elements necessary to go fishing. But until you find that Jesus Christ, your awareness, is Lord, you will fish. As did these disciples in the night of human darkness. That is, you will fish for things thinking things to be real and will fish with the human bait, which is a struggle and an effort. Trying to make contact with this one, that one. Trying to coerce this being or the other being. And all such effort will be in vain. But when you discover your awareness of being to be Christ Jesus, you will let him direct your fishing. And you will fish in consciousness for the things that you desire. For your desire will be the fish that you will catch. Because your consciousness is the only living reality you will fish in the deep waters of consciousness. If you would catch that which is beyond your present capacity, you must launch out into deeper waters. For within your present consciousness, such fish, to launch out into deeper waters, Leave behind you all that is now your present problem or limitation by taking your attention away from it. Turn your back completely upon every problem and limitation that you now possess. Dwell upon just being by saying, I am, I am to yourself. Continue to declare to yourself that you just are. Do not condition this declaration. Just continue to feel yourself to be, and without warning, you will find yourself slipping the anchor that tied you to the shallow of your problems and moving out into the deep. This is usually accompanied with a feeling of expansion. You will feel yourself expand as though you are actually growing. Don't be afraid, for courage is necessary. You are not going to die to anything by your former limitations, but they are going to die as you move away from them, for they live only in your consciousness. In this deep or expanded consciousness, you will find yourself to be a power that you had never dreamt of before. The things desired before you shoved off from the shores of limitation are the fish you are going to catch in this deep. Because you have lost all consciousness of your problems and barriers, it is now the easiest thing in the world to feel yourself to be one with the things desired. Because I am a consciousness is the resurrection and the life. You must attach this resurrecting power that you are to the thing desired if you would make it appear and live in your world. Now you begin to assume the nature of the thing desired by feeling, I am wealthy, I am free, I am strong. When these fields are fixed within yourself, your formless being will take upon itself the forms of the things felt. You become crucified upon the feelings of wealth, freedom, and strength. Remain buried in the stillness of these convictions. Then, as a thief in the night, and when you least expect it, these qualities will be resurrected in your world as living reality. The world shall touch you and see that you are flesh and blood for you shall begin to bear fruit of the nature of these qualities newly appropriated. This is the art of successful fishing for the manifestations of life. Successful realization of the thing desired is also told us in the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Here it is recorded that Daniel, while in the lion's den, turned his back upon the lions and looked towards the light coming from above. That the lions remained powerless and Daniel's faith in his God saved him. This also is your story, and you too must do as Daniel did. If you found yourself in a lion's den, you, you would have no other concern but lions. You would not be thinking of one thing in the world but your problem, which problem would be lion. Yet, you are told that Daniel turned his back upon them and and look towards the light. That was his God. If we would follow the example of Daniel, we would. While imprisoned within the den of poverty of sickness, take your attention away from our problems of debts or sickness and dwell upon the thing we seek. If we do not look back in consciousness to our problems, but continue in faith, believing ourselves to be that which we seek, we too will find our prison walls open and the thing sought. Yes, whatsoever things realized, another story is told us, of the widow and the three drops of oil. The prophet asked the widow, what have you in your house? And she replied, three drops of oil. He then said to her, 
Go buy our vessels. Close the door after you have returned into your house and begin to pour. And she poured from three drops of oil into all the borrowed vessels, filling them to capacity with oil remaining. You, the reader, are this widow. You have not a husband to impregnate you or make you fruitful, for a widow is a barren state. Your awareness is now the Lord, for the prophet that has become your husband, follow the example of the widow, who instead of recognizing emptiness or nothingness, recognize the something of three drops of oil. Then the command to her, go within and close the door. That is, shut the door of the senses that tell you of the empty measures, the debts, when you have taken your attention away completely by shutting out the evidence of the senses. Begin to feel the joy, symbolized by oil, of having received the things desired. When the agreement is established within you so that all doubts and fears have passed away. Then, you too will fill all the empty measures of your life and will have an abundance running over. Recognition is the power that conjures in the world. Every state that you have ever recognized, you have embodied. That which you are recognizing as true of yourself today is that which you are experiencing. So be the widow and recognize joy, no matter how little the beginnings of recognition. And you will be generously rewarded. For the world is a magnified mirror, magnifying everything that you are conscious of being. I am the Lord the God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What a glorious revelation, your awareness now revealed as the Lord the God. Come. Awake from your dream of being imprisoned. Realize that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. The world and all that dwells therein. You have become so enmeshed in the belief that you are man that you have forgotten the glorious being that you are. Now with your memory restored decree, the unseen to appear, and it shall appear, for all things are compelled to respond to the voice of God. Your awareness of being, the word is at your command. 